Well, we finally have it. Thanks to watcher Mr. Gaming Guy, we embarked on a journey to try to find the worst laptop in the world. But before I reveal which one is the worst laptop that you can buy, I want to go into a little bit of the criteria as to what we what constitutes the worst laptop in the world. So for starters, we removed any Chromebooks out of the equation. And the reason why is because here in the curated studio, we don't particularly care for Chromebooks. We find their hardware to be inherently very cheap and unreliable. They're tied to the Google ecosystem. And while they have, I guess, a purpose in a classroom for maybe like just needing something inexpensive and cheap, we don't really feel that they are serious computers. Now, we might get some hate on that, but nevertheless, that's how we feel. The other thing that we needed to take into consideration is things like price and value. So you could buy, like, let's say, a $1,500 HP Envy, and uh, even though it's a little bit overpriced and, and very unreliable, well, the fact is, is that it still gets the job done. And then, of course, you can come down to, like, the $200 mark, where um, it's, of course, a cheap laptop, but you get what you pay for, and again, gets the job done. So the one that we picked today as the worst laptop in the world was what we figured is it basically had no redeeming quality whatsoever and the price had no impact on this. The machine was just borderline unusable. And there is one kind of exciting thing to report on all of these findings and that is that it's very hard to find a bad laptop these days. Most everything that you buy is going to be somewhat adequate and that's good news. It means that we live in a day and age where no matter what you buy it will probably at least be okay. So it's, it's, uh, it's hard to go wrong. But in any event, I'm very, very excited to finally introduce the worst laptop in the world. Here we have the HP Stream 14. This thing is an adulteration of what a laptop should be. It has only 64 gigabytes of storage, which is barely enough to do anything. It has a 14.1 inch low resolution screen and it's not bright, colorful, nor very pleasant to look at. It uses an Intel Celeron processor, meaning that it's incredibly, incredibly slow. And you can't do anything meaningful on it as far as productivity, and you sure as hell can't play any games. But the thing is, is that this isn't the worst laptop in the world. No, no, not even by a long shot. See, the worst laptop in the world makes this thing look like the brand new MacBook Pro. Nope, the worst laptop in the world is right here the Core Innovations CTL 14 inch. Now see, this thing is an HP Stream competitor. It's like basically, and by the way, Core Innovations is Walmart's in-house brand attempting to make the world's worst laptops. See, the thing is, is that this laptop has an Intel Atom processor, which is even slower than the Intel Celeron. It has four gigs of RAM as well, and also 64 gigabytes of solid state drive storage. But this thing is so slow, it is borderline unusable. And it doesn't just stop there. It's not just about the speed. The battery life is absolutely awful. It has one of the worst keyboards I've ever used. It has the worst trackpad I have ever used. It has a 14.1 inch screen that is so bad that you won't even want to look at it for much longer than about 30 minutes. And don't even get me started on this piece of garbage webcam that is sitting at the top. This thing was yanked out of a cell phone from the 90s. This laptop is the worst laptop you can buy. Let's talk power on the core innovations, or lack thereof. See, this computer has the Intel Atom processor, and for the life of me, I cannot understand why Intel still produced it just did that on its own. I can, for the life of me, cannot understand why Intel produces that processor anymore, but they do, and it has one, and that makes it the world's slowest computer in the world, alongside the worst computer in the world. It is, it is so slow, it is like a sloth. It is a slow, slothy computer. See, this computer is so slow that even if you wanted to, like, let's say, do a Word document on it, you would start by hitting the Word icon. By the way, that's if you can get the trackpad to respond, but you would start by hitting the Word icon on the screen, and you would be sitting there for about uh, 75 seconds waiting for Word to open up. Meanwhile, all of your friends and family, there's their computers opened it up right instantaneously. But nevertheless, you're waiting for Word to open up. It finally does. And then you have to struggle to move the cursor over to the blank document, where you then start typing away 
You'll notice that as you type things, you've made a lot of typos and, and yet there was some weird lag and disconnect between when you typed things and when it actually showed up on the screen. But nevertheless, you finished struggling making your Word document. So you go up to file and then save. And then what you're presented with is one of those office space style save bars where it's just slowly loading across the screen while you're just like waiting to yank that floppy disk out. But then it finally saves after about another minute. And then you go to hit the little red X to close the document at the top. So then you hit the red X, which on a normal computer, you hit the red X and the windows closes. But no, on this one, you have to wait about two seconds for the computer to think about what you did and go, hmm, did it really want to close, close the window? Ah, fine. And then, and then it closes. So. Let's say, and then it doesn't stop there. I mean, if you download, if you manage to download like Chrome or Firefox, or you even want to have multiple tabs open, don't even think about having multiple internet tabs open on this thing. You can you can barely navigate to, through one internet tab, much less multiple. It's not even just about the RAM. It's not even just about the Atom processor. It's the combination of the RAM, the processor, the slow ass solid state drive that they put in this thing, that it is just incapable of of, of, of loading anything at a, at a quick and, and fine and fast, it can't, it's a sloppy computer. It can't load anything, can't load anything quickly. But no, oh and by the way, here's the thing. I'm, so in, in a rare form, I did manage to pump out a user benchmark, um, a user benchmark. And the results are going to be, they're comedic. They, they're so, they will surprise you. And here it is, without further ado, here is the, the user benchmark benchmark. If we pop open the folder here, then we go over to benchmarking. My here, I'm gonna move move over the I want to move over this file. And as you can see, it's struggling pretty heavily to do that. There we go. Context menu popped up for whatever fucking reason. Um, we're gonna say copy here. I'm surprised it was actually that easy to, to, to do. Okay, so I'm trying to just move the window out of the way. So we'll hit the X to close that out. X to close that out. Let's uh, go ahead and close that out, close this. I don't want the fucking menu close. My God, do you see this people? User benchmark. God, you cannot make up how bad this trackpad is. It was seriously, they much like the speakers, they would have just been better off not even putting anything on there at all. So we're just gonna go ahead and run this and then I'll, I'll skip past the majority of this stuff. <laughs> I have never seen this before, but it literally says incomplete, incomplete, incomplete for all user benchmark tests. And if I can get the trackpad to cooperate, 0.9% is too low to play any 3D games. <laughs> With an extremely low single core processor, this CPU can barely handle email and light web browsing. No arguments there. And overall, this PC is performing below expectations, yada, yada, yada. This computer is so bad and so slow that not even a benchmark can, uh, <laughs> it can't even perform a benchmark. That is just embarrassing on all fronts. So we've established that this computer is so slow that you can't even benchmark the damn thing. That is an all time first for not just this channel, but in my, exp I've been using computers for 30 years now, and um, that, that was a, a first for me. But the speed of this thing isn't where it stops. See, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the trackpad and keyboard next. Not to boast or anything here, but uh, as a lot of you viewers know, I'm usually about an average of about, eh, about 110 to 120 words per minute typing on a good keyboard. So we're gonna see here how bad this core innovations Typing is, that is even if the test will load because the computer is just so unspeakably slow. This literally loads instantaneously on pretty much every other laptop. So yeah, we're just gonna, it froze. Look at that, well, that stopped moving. All right, here we go, and rock and roll. 
So my net speed ended up being 85 words per minute with about 16 typos. That is, I believe, one of the worst I have ever scored. The reason why it is so bad is there's some, is just a peculiar spacing in these keys that, you know, adjust the camera, there's just sort of like a, a, a peculiar spacing in these keys. And also when you like hit on T, for example, and you're really, you know, going fast and aggressively, all the Y will pop up or R will pop up. You get the idea, the surrounding keys will, uh, respond instead of the one you actually press. Uh, but it's also, it's very cheap feeling in general. The keys are kind of wobbly and just don't feel very good to, to, to press on. So if you're a professional typist, ooh, that, that looks good. If you're a professional typist, uh, you're gonna hate this Core Innovations. And if you thought the keyboard was bad, then the trackpad is even worse. Not only can you not, I mean, you can barely navigate the computer with this trackpad, but let, let me see if this picks up on, on microphone here. That is the loudest click I have ever heard on a trackpad ever. It is so loud that if you were in a library with this thing, they'd probably kick you out. But the clicking on this trackpad, it wouldn't even be that bad if you could if you could just not have to click. But the trackpad is so unresponsive that if you try to like go to an icon and if I can even get the mouse cursor over there, if you try to go to an icon and like use like tap, tap to click. So really you're, you have to use the click because if you just try to tap to open stuff up, they just it just won't. You might get a menu, you might get nothing, but you sure as hell won't get what you clicked on. No, you have to use the click. And it is so unbelievably loud that um, you're gonna need earplugs when using this thing. Let's talk about features next. There's none to speak of. It doesn't have a fingerprint scanner. It doesn't have a Windows Hello compatible camera. In fact, the camera on it is an absolute joke. You know what? Let's go ahead and let's cut the bullshit. Let's just watch, uh, let's just see what this webcam footage looks like now. This is a test of the webcam on the Core Innovations, um, what the hell is this thing called? The Core Innovations CT, CLT 1464, 14.1 inch laptop. It's awful. This looks like webcam footage from like a cell phone back from like the early 2000s. This is the worst webcam I've ever seen on a laptop. That was embarrassingly bad. It doesn't have a backlight on the keyboard. It has some of the worst speakers I've ever heard in a computer ever. And in rare form, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little audio test on this thing too. Here's what that footage looks like, meow. And we're gonna come down to Edge, and I wanna pull open youtube.com, do a quick little audio test here. And still taking a long time to load on this 802.11n with an Atom processor. I've never heard speakers this bad in a laptop, ever. They, might, they literally might as well have just not put anything in. They're quiet. Let's get to a bass heavy part if I can get the damn trackpad to work together. This computer's speakers literally have no highs, no lows, no mids. There is no definition to it whatsoever. The sound just kind of is like a jumbled kind of mess. And they don't get loud enough that really, if you were sitting, like let's say it was you and your friends sitting around a table trying to watch a movie on the world's worst computer in the world. By the way, I genuinely don't even believe Netflix or Hulu will run on this thing. I am gonna try a test of that here in a moment. I just, it just, it just came to me right now. I'm gonna try a test of that in a moment and I'll, I'll put that on the camera here. But anyway, point is, is that if you are sitting at your table and you want to watch a movie with some friends or something like that, the speakers are so bad that they would be inaudible to even watch a movie. And that is if your friends even next to you could hear it. But while we're on the subject, let's see if this thing can even handle a movie like running. Uh, let's, let's see if it can watch something on Hulu. Sorry about the autofocus. It's all, ooh, Robin Williams. Sorry about the autofocus. It's because this weird crap with the, the displays. Refresh rate, okay. Successful. Yeah, 
Well, aside from the fact that the speakers are abysmal, there is some lag between when, let me see if I can find, yeah, here's some, some more recent footage. The, the audio in the video cannot sync. But it can't be all bad, right? I mean, after all, it's got, um, let's, let's take a look at the IO on this bad boy. So on this side, we have a regular USB port. Now, of course, they're just gonna put like an ancient caveman USB port on there. You can put your mouse in there because you sure as hell can't use the trackpad. You've got where you should plug in your headphones because they really shouldn't have even bothered putting speakers in it in the first place. Um, so you got a little place to put your headphones. And then of course, you've got a mini CF card reader, which uh, most people will find absolutely useless. And then on this side, you have a mini HDMI port. No, it's not full size and no, it's not micro. It's mini. It's the middle one. It's the one that like nobody ever uses and or wants. So basically you had to buy a cheap computer, but they expect you to buy a dongle to go along with it. That's clever. Uh, and then, but at least they don't have Kensington lock on there, right? Because everybody uses that. And then on this, uh, this port is a USB 3 port, but there's a little funny thing about this USB 3 port. And by the way, no, you can't charge on it, but so the thing is, is that Core Innovations decided to license USB 3, and there is a cost for manufacturers to license USB 3, but they decided to put this one on here in the hopes that it would like persuade you into buying it because like it makes it faster or something. But the Intel Atom processor and the solid state drive in this thing are so slow that they are incapable of using the data rates that that USB 3 is capable of. So basically, even if you got a solid state USB 3 external drive, it wouldn't matter. It's not quick enough to utilize all the performance. So it makes it useless. They base, they wasted their own money putting a useless port on there. And then of course, where you plug it in, because for $150, you sure as hell don't get anything that runs on solar energy. But I digress. It is 150 bucks, right? So it absolutely, like it must be worth the price, right? I mean, it's gotta be good value. Well, hell no, because this thing, by the way, this, I'll admit, there's one nice feature. I guess it sort of opens up pretty wide, but the plastics are so cheap and chintzy that I would be afraid just putting this in my backpack without it tearing to shreds like paper mache. I do not think that this thing is capable of longevity in the slightest, no. Uh, if you are a traveler, and uh, we'll get to traveling and battery life here in just a moment, but no, if you are a traveler or a student and you are putting this thing in your backpack or you're r abusive to your, to your devices or anything of that nature, I would not have the confidence that this thing could stand up to any kind of, of abuse. It will not patina. It will probably barely last. I would be surprised if you would even get a year's out of, uh, out of use out of this laptop. But while we're talking about it, let's, let's segue into battery life. You see this thing, um, there, man, this is so bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm like literally breaking character. It's so, it's so bad. You will be lucky to practically get about three and a half hours worth of battery life from this laptop. You would think something that is small and running an Intel Atom processor and, and barely any, any, it's got barely anything going on that it should have fantastic battery life, right? I mean, even an Apple watch lasts all day, but no, you will get no more than about three and a half hours out of use on this thing. So if you're a traveler that automatically makes it worthless. And then if you're a student, it pretty much makes it worthless too because you couldn't even finish one of your classes without the battery dying. But if that wasn't the worst part of it, it's how you charge the damn thing. I'm gonna walk off camera here for a second and pull the plug out here and, oh, look at that, it was still on camera. During the recording of this video, we've literally had to keep the power cord on standby because, well, it had a habit of dying while we were recording. But look at the cord that they give you. This thing, let me see if they get into focus. This thing is literally something that they would, that they would give like an, with an external hard drive. It is so underpowered that it literally takes about eight or nine hours to charge this thing from like roughly zero to 95%. That is the worst charge speed I have ever seen in a laptop ever. And that makes it pretty much useless for anybody that needs to rely on battery life on this thing. You, there is no practical use of this computer being able to run on battery. No, you will have to be tethered to this thing for the rest of time. And the thing is, is that the cord that they gave you, it's got like a two and a half foot goddamn cable on it. 
So who, who has a desk that is, like you have to literally be on the floor when charging and or using this computer because the cord isn't long enough. I mean, it literally, it basically takes up the whole frame. At least Tulip Packard had the decency to give a normal charger with their HP stream, but no, Core Innovations gave you this. Quick example of how bad the battery charging is, by the way. Clock's reporting 7.28 a.m. We click on the, the battery thing, it's at 22%. I'm gonna check back in an hour and we'll see where it is. It's been almost an hour later and we've gone from, I think, what, like 22% to 32%. So um, yeah, 10% 10, 10 in almost an hour. Um, it, that's that's tough, man. That's gonna be a lot more than, it's gonna be a lot more than five hours. Some other things to hate on with the core innovations. You can see probably on camera, there is a flicker in uh, in the monitor that's happening right now. Now, when you're using the computer, you can't see it. It's sort of like imperceptible to the human eye. But the reason why that's happening is because the refresh rate on the monitor is like some bizarre number that we can't actually figure out. So even though it's reporting to the computer that it's running at like 60 hertz, it absolutely is not. Using the monitor, I mean, the, the, just the display, um, it, it's fatiguing to the eyes. It's not very bright. It's kind of blurry. It's not very color accurate. Much like everything on this laptop, it was a parts bin piece, and I don't know what parts bin they were fishing this crap out of, but um, probably cavemen had better displays on their laptops than this core innovation does. And then as far as just little ancillary things, it has 802.11n wireless, which I can't even believe you can find the modem chips for those anymore, but nevertheless, it has 802.11n in it. There is just not a single redeeming quality with this machine. And even though you can buy it for 150 bucks, you have to ask yourself, why would you? Now, the thing is, is that I've, uh, even in, earlier in this video, I talked about how I don't really think Chromebooks are serious com uh, contenders in the laptop world, but I would sooner recommend somebody buy a Chromebook than I would recommend them buy this core innovation. So there you have it. We finally found the worst laptop in the world, the Core Innovation CTL 14.1 inch portable piece of crap. It cannot game, it cannot process, it does not have a good trackpad, it doesn't have a good keyboard, it has some of the worst wireless reception of all time, it doesn't even have a brand on the front of the damn thing. It's made of poor quality materials. It's just a piece of junk, not a single redeeming quality whatsoever. At least it turns on, but I gotta tell you, lately I've been struggling with that too. Sometimes when I hit that power button, it just doesn't wanna boot up. So anyway, should you buy the Core Innovations 14.1 inch laptop, the worst laptop in the world? And the answer is a resounding no. We hope this video was entertaining. It certainly wasn't helpful because you're not gonna be buying this piece of shit but we hope you enjoyed it nevertheless. We had a good time trying to find this thing. Again, thank you um, to all those who suggested the worst laptop to review, the worst laptop in the world. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us in the comments section. Please like and subscribe. Please tell your friends and family about this channel because after all, we do make outstanding material and we will be back with another video real soon.